We have uh, Marco Chaka talking to us today on converting differential photometry results to the standard system using transform generator and transform applier. And I'm going to give him a timer. Marco. Okay, thank you. Um, the, the level of the talk is basically compared to what you have heard today. It's more like, okay, you put the screwdriver here and turn. So don't be, uh, you know, not exactly high level here, but whatever. Uh, um, I'll tell you a little bit more about this. Okay, uh, but in 2014, uh, this is when I noticed that the AVSO was offering these two, these two tools. Uh, the uh, TG, or Transform Generator, which has been authored by uh, Gordon Myers, uh, runs under Python. Python is a free software, so you, you don't really need to know anything about Python. Just install it as per instructions and uh, uh, follow the instruction and TG will work. And then TA, which is authored by George Silvis, which you just left, um, allows you to apply this transform coefficient to your observations. The idea being is that when you do this, the goal is that whatever data you take can be transformed so everybody uses the same scales. That is, my data will be the same as your data if we measure things correctly. Um, I'm going to use two standard fields to show you to, to generate a transform, M67 and uh, MGC7790. How consistent the results are, and then I apply this transform uh, to uh, a couple of stars that I've followed, AUMA and RR SETI. Um, personally, I have my 60 millimeters refractor, age 12 to 17. Scar in the sky, I try to find things out. And then the last thing I tried to do was, was come at Caltech, which was supposed to be comet of the century. How many of those have we seen? And none of them worked out. We should, we should know better by now. Uh, so I tried to find it. Um, of course, I didn't find it. Nobody did, basically. But I think, in retrospect, what I was finding was the Orion Nebula. But what did they know? Nothing. So at that point, I did just 17 and say, OK, fine, quit. Then in 2004, my wife decided, well, how about a telescope? Oh, God. So you know what happens then. About five years later, since, well, I am a, you know, I'm a physics professor. Uh, I wrote a grant or two throughout my career, so I decided, what the heck, let's try this. So a little bit, a little bit, a couple of uh, uh, lucky bounces of the dice, and so I got to build a small observatory. So I roll off, got a 14-inch scope uh, um, with a roll-off roll, roll roof. Um, 16 by 20, uh, I can close the roof remotely. I use uh, CCD Commander to control everything. So I'm at the point that I can actually take data while I'm sleeping. Somebody might say, it shows, but you know, that's, we all do that at one time or another, shall we? Um, the camera, it's uh, as big as the L6303, for those of you that want to know the details. Uh, it's a 3,000 by 2,000 uh, pixel, um, 9 microns. So big, big microns, big, big pixels. It's, you know, kind of deep wells. It's good for these kind of things. However, unfortunately, that's the, 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 the telescope I could afford. It's kind of slow. It's, uh, it's an F12 at the, at the end of the story. So if you, if you want to look at something very faint, you're going to integrate it a long, long time. The nice thing about it is that I have a very nice mount. That's the best thing I got. And um, I can take five minutes exposures without having to guide, which is nice. Not everything works well every night. Uh, you know, it says, what the heck was it? Why is he pointing backwards? Um, he got confused, evidently. He thought it was on one side of the meridian, was on the other, actually. So, but no big deal. It does fit underneath the roof. So it does not crash into the roof if anything happens. This, the uh, dew shield, it's soft. So if he rips it off, the OTA, no big deal. But, you know, it's... Little things that you got to be careful about. It. All right. In 
remember, I know nothing about real astronomy. Okay, so 2010 I started reading, I realized that, yeah, you do need transform coefficient. And so for the first time I tried to get some part, some, you know, numbers to associate with them. And I try by using uh, the equatorial fields of Landolt. And uh, this is the one I use. It's got eight stars. You cannot see the numbers, but they're labeled. And so I start with my spreadsheet. I know to use spreadsheets. But, you know, they can be painstaking. What are going to do? B minus V for your uh, uh, experimental results versus B minus V for the star in, you know, the, the big B versus the small B. Um, you make plots and uh, you do the inverse and you get your transform coefficient. Then you take the coefficient and you put in another spreadsheet to compute the transform through your data. And you got eight star and a lot of work. So it's possible to be doing it by hand, and most of you have done that, but there must be a better way. And this is why I was elated when I, I saw a transform generator. Basically, it does all the work for you. You go to this standard field, you know, take, take, a, take a picture. Take a picture of M67 or NGC7790. How many transforms do you want? You want all four? You take four fields with with the four filters, BVRI, or five if you want to include U. And uh, then you start the reduction type and you upload. I've used Vfelt because to me it's the easiest tool, but you can use also any other package that can do reduction, that can extract instrumental magnitudes. Um, then uh, once you've done this uh, generating your instrumental magnitude, uh, you can uh, have uh, TG read the files, and we thought we'll go, if it is connected to the internet, has to be, we'll go to the AVSO and pull out all the value for the comp star that you have in your field. And because you can pull the value, it compared your results with the value that comp stars and make the, makes the corrections automatically without you having to, to write, you know, spreadsheet and graphs and charts. Um, this is an example. I have a selected the standard field, which is M67 in this case. These are the uh, four files that were generated by Vfote on a, a M67 field in four filters. Select them. I can select what kind of signal to noise ratio I'm happy to live with. The default is 20. You can make it higher or smaller. And uh, you say calculate transform set in about 10, 15 seconds. Depends how fast your machine is. There they are. All of them. Of course, we like to be hands on. So we don't like to just have a black box. And because you never know. All right. And so, uh, you can, this is a field, and that's what we thought does. It's pretty darn crowded. And so you want to be careful here. Um, some of these data are perfect, others not so much. And there is an overlap. The, the, uh, uh, the annuli um, intersect each other. There's other stars in there. So it's better always to look at what the data really look like. And TG will allow you to do that. In fact, you see this uh, uh, are, uh, rows. You can click on. You can click on them. Once you click, you see what the fit is doing. So this is something that looks like this. The colors are, of course, not. If you notice, don't come out. But these are red dots and green dots. The red dots are dots that I decided somewhat arbitrarily. But we all have done that at one time or another. So I decided these are not good enough. For example, that po point over here, that point over there, I decided they don't belong in the fit. You have to be honest with yourself. You want to make sure that when you take the points out, you're not changing the slope from this way to that way, because I mean that means you're making things up. But it's it's a way to get a little bit more secure in your choice of uh, data that you're fitting. 
the biggest difference from what I just showed you before, my graph there were on eight stars. This one's got 78. So that's the biggest difference. And the correlation factor, which is this parameter here, tells you how good your fit is. Of course, you all know. 0.99 means that it's fairly certain that it is a straight line with that slope. You can do one time, you can do two times, you can do three times. At the end of the story, you can uh, take four, five, six, seven, eight times the M67 fields, and you can average them out. And in here, I have the average of three, actually four, uh, fields of M67, four colors each, and then two from NGC 7790. The numbers are a little bit different, of course, but overall, if you see the number, they're kind of tiny. They're pretty, far, pretty much consistent. So the numbers come out reasonably so. And so I average them, and these are my transforms. Look at TBV, 1.427. Maybe, maybe too big, I don't know. And like I said, I only play an astronomer, I play one on TV, I'm not one. Um, but if I go back to a couple of slides previously, this one, the slope of this line is, and I can read the numbers, bottom line is the same TBV that I had five years ago is 1.45. So I got 1.45 in 2010, I got 1.45 in 2016 with a completely different method. I gotta believe it. So I, even I'm wrong twice, I'm right twice. So. Okay, thank you. All right, well, these are my transforms, so what do we do with them? Here comes TA. In TA, you put your transform coefficient here. Then uh, you do your observations, have them get the instrumental magnitude using whatever method you like. Uh, of course, I use VFO, the cross for me is easier. And then you tell them, okay, this is my tra my data, transform them for me. Uh, you got to put them in here, copy and paste, click the button, and if you've done everything right, you know, if the file format is the correct one, and you, you identified the chart correctly, and so on and so forth, program takes over. And 30 seconds later, you got all your uh, uh, observation transformed, all 250 within 30 seconds. So, these are my data. This is a Yuma. Uh, it's a very fast uh, pulsator. And uh, the data are kind of noisy, not great. Uh, but the same token, a Yuma has a very large uh, amplitude fluctuation. So maybe that's what it is. Uh, some of them, though, I know that they're not right. These are the, the one on top are the I data. And I remember that one particular night I was running with a very high cirrus clouds, water vapor. And infrared and water vapor don't go along well. So that may be it, I hope. Um, I've also done a lot of observation on RR SETI, which is a little bit longer. It's more than half a day. So for me, it was kind of uh, oh, it's a long one for me. Um, it's still not. Uh, yeah, RR, RRAB, five star, it's one of the uh, areas of star pro programs. And uh, I was able to get six maxima. Um, <clears throat> I measured the period. I got this number here, which is consistent with what I found in the literature. Um, VSX carries this number here, but this one seems to be the more accepted one at this stage. And I tried to see if the uh, uh, the six maximum time timing were in, ag in agreement with the uh, epoch and so on, and kind of good, good agreements on. I was happy. Okay, this is my data, a little bit better looking. And uh, I realized that uh, in the 5,000 data points that are existing on, uh, actually more than that, on the AVSO database, there were no Rs. I don't know why, but there, there is no R data. The only R that are there are mine. 
curiosity more than anything else. I don't know enough to say they're important or not. I will take them at this stage. I hope to get a bit, little bit better later on. And uh, uh, this I was able to, since I have all of them, I decided to see if I could compute the V minus V, and I got also V minus R. And these are my results. So if you do CCD observing, uh, it will be good if you can try your hand at uh, transforming your data. That way people, you know, researcher all over can, can use yours without having to think about it. Thank you. Any questions? Gary. Not so much a question, but a comment about your 1.45. A lot of people will tell you that's wrong. I have a telescope that has the same 1.4 something. I can't remember exactly. Done the transformations many times using these as well as other tools. There are CCD and filter combinations that do give you transformation coefficients that high. Yeah, I, as far as I know, the ideal trans, the ideal case would be one, 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 and all the other zero. Uh, I do get one and one for the uh, VR and VI and all the others. This one, it's way off. Uh, by the same token, if you look at the QE curve of my camera in the blue, there's a match. And the fact is, when I take that with the blue, I have to wait a long, longer time before I get anything. So that's what it is. So sometimes the subject to do also with the optics you get, the coding. Is it that good in the blue or not? Depends. That's what we are transformed for. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Uh, another question?